Oh, hello, jewelry makers. So this is my very last um, advent demo. So I'm really sad not to be doing them because I've loved doing this with you um, and the excitement of obviously seeing what's in the, um, the advent calendar. So if we look today, I can remember it's the 22nd. So I'm gonna come on over to the advent calendar and have a look. So let's open it up. Okay, there we are, here we go. Let's take this out, so I'm gonna bring that over. Thank you, Adam. These are, I love them. So you've got in here, and I'll try and pronounce them correctly. You've got in here 14 calots. Yes, not collets, calots, I think. See, these are genius little findings, and they're not just your standard uh, calot. They are, if we have a look, I'm gonna have to put my glasses on for this, they are really really beautiful lovely star shaped ones so that when we fold them up we're going to have that really really pretty little star and so the design that i've um the project i've used them for because you get so many so i've obviously used two on the, as actual um uh the job that they do so i'm going to turn it round now so that you can see so if i just bring this here so they essentially a bit like a, a fancy uh crimp tube and cover so if I just find where it is so it's this section here uh, but because these are the decorative ones so I've actually used them as well as um, charms going around there because you are getting the, the 14 so you've got 14 base metal um, calots so if I have a look at so so the project we're going to do is going to do that um, that the bracelet we're also going to um, work with a little bit of wire as well, because you know I can't resist um, wire work, and we're gonna make some of our own findings. So just in case you don't have any, uh, uh, maybe clasps, anything like that, so we're gonna make our own there. Uh, nice simple one, almost like a hook and eye, uh, but we can involve some gemstones with it as well. So that's the project that we're gonna do. So if we look now at the tools um, and materials that, that we're going to need. So, Let's have a look. So I've got, um, I'm going to work with, I'm actually going to work, so hopefully it will show up in um, a slightly bigger size. So I've got some really, really lovely amber here and I've got some um, smoky quartz. So that's just what I had in my stash at home. The actual bracelet uh, is made of um, lovely uh, jadeite. So, you know, you, you can really sort of work uh, whatever with whatever you want in there. So I've got some rounds there. I've got a few spacers. Obviously got the, the um, advent uh, calots there. I've got some jump rings, some head pins, a little bit of extender chain. I'm gonna work with um, some crimps. I could tie a knot if I was gonna, if I wanted to, but I'm gonna work with um, a couple of crimps in there. I've got some um, just round plated, uh, you can either work in a, an eight mil or a one mil silver wire my beading thread. So I'm gonna work with a, a, a bright color, so hopefully you'll be able to see it as, as we're going along uh, the design. You might decide that, you know, whatever stones you're working with, you might want a slightly more discreet, discreet color. Or you might wanna go with that. I'm gonna go with a nice bright pink, because, you know, it's one of my favorites. Um, but hopefully you'll be able to see it as, as we're going. Tools-wise, um, obviously it's gonna be a lot, of, it's gonna be more beading, but then when we get on to making the our findings, I am going to work with, um, so I've got my flush cutters, round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, uh, and I might as well, I might work with my bail making pliers, so I'll have those to hand as well. And just for uh, good practice when you are, uh, I'm going to use two lots of my chain nose pliers for my jump rings. I shall remind myself of that, or feel free to remind me when I'm opening and closing them and not using one pair of pliers and my fingers. So if I just put all this to the side, so I've got it all to hand, so I don't need any of these at the moment. And let's see how they actually work. So they are such lovely little findings and I feel like at, at Jewelry Maker, we didn't have them for a, a long time. Um, but what we've got here, so you can see, so you've got a loop. So it's almost like a, like a little hook that it, that it sits on. 
and that will turn into uh, we're going to turn that so it's a complete loop there but then what you've actually got down at the bottom there if you can see you can see so you've got a hole there and that's where our thread or wire or whatever it is that we choose um, is going to sort of come through and then we can close that up and it'll look like that pretty star and then we can start start beading so they are really really lovely um, charms but, but also a very very useful finding as well so if we have a look at the start of how, how we're going to start the um, the piece so here we are we can see it here so this is what the starting point is so we're going to we're going to do this uh, really really simple um, beaded section and then we're going to make our own findings there so a really nice just simple uh, hook and eye clasp okay so my starting point, so I'm just going to move that to the side. Tuck that out of the way. So the thing with you know your beading thread, obviously it's got that fine, fine wire running, running through. So to do this, uh, this design, I'm going to have, I'm going to work with two, two lots of the um, beading thread. So one lot, I'm going to take one extra long piece, but then I'm going to find the center point and then I'm going to work with the with two the two ends so if I just pop that in and let's cut that off there okay so just gonna get that kink out so I probably got there and I'll get that one out as well let's get rid of that so let's see how this goes so I probably got maybe about getting on for about a meter there of um, in total of the of the beading thread okay so I'm going to start pick up get some of my crimp tubes in there and we can see how this this is going to work so I'm just going to have that so it stops just bring that through so I'm feeding it on and that is just going to go to that midpoint I'm going to have that so that that is then squished on there. So usually you would have your two lots of your thread through there, but I just want something that's going to then hold here. Okay, so I'm going to take the two pieces of the beading wire. So hopefully you will see this in the bright colour. And that's coming down into that collot. So let's feed that through. So you could tie a knot if you wanted to, um, uh, depending on you know what, what sort of beading thread that you're working with, but we want that to just go and get hidden in there. So I'm going to start to close that up, get my pliers, and that now is all hidden, just give that a pinch, in that lovely pretty star. Okay. So now we've got, we know it's obviously that one, that one lot of beading thread, but we've got two ends to work with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple of my spacers. I'm going to try and get everything, I might get everything to hand actually, that would probably make more sense. So I'll just get some of these out of the way. So when you're working with, um, I guess anything really jewellery wise, it's sort of, um, you want to have everything to hand so that you don't have to keep putting, uh, you know, putting things down or taking it off uh, strands or getting them out of boxes. Um, so I'm just going to start and that's a bit of planning in this bead board. Okay. And then we can see how the length of the bracelet as we start to do it. So let's get a few of those. Okay. So if I bring that in there, we can see where we are here. I've got my spacers there. I don't think I need any of the findings at the moment. Okay, I'm also going to just, so that little, I'm gonna then get my round nose pliers and I'm gonna roll that back into itself. So that loop is then closed. So you can see there, so we can attach that to our jump ring. So it's a really, really, really clever finding. And the fact that these are, you know, that star shape is really lovely. 
Okay, so I'm gonna take my two ends. So again, like, as you're starting off with all of, you know, any sort of, you, you know, your jewelry projects, at the beginning, you can see, so I'm actually, you know, I've got to work with uh, fifth, two lots of 50 centimeters. So it, it can be a little bit fiddlier at first, but as we start to bead, you know, it's gonna eat, eat up that, that beading thread. So I'm gonna take two, one spacer on either side and let that drop. Okay, and then I'm going to take one spacer and go through one side. Take the other beading thread and go through the other. So that's just sort of starting, starting me off on the design. Let's see where it's going. There it is. So a little bit of control there. There we are. Right, so now I'm going to make the most of that fine wire that is in there. So I'm gonna, I am gonna give it a bit of a pull and hopefully that will hold its shape a bit more. So you can see, so we've got two and then we're going into, into one. So we've got that nice sort of ease into sort of like that widening of the design. Okay, so if we look at the actual piece itself, what we've got is you can see, so we've got the slightly larger, uh, the white jadeite and then going into the, the smaller black. So what I'm going to do to, to replicate that for this design is I'm going to have the, the white jadeite would be are going to be the smoky quartz and then the black jadeite which are slightly smaller so I think I've got a six six and a four mil there so they're going to be my amber so the first thing I'm going to do is I want to have uh, two of the larger size so I'm going to add one onto this side, let that fall, and one onto the other side, and let that fall. Okay, so we can see that's sort of sitting like that. We're then gonna go into, take the smaller size, so this, for this next section, I wanna have four of that four mil. I'm not going to, I'm going to use them in sort of two lots of two. So I'm going to go one, two, and then I'm going to go through that section there. So I'm sort of taking the beading thread through both of those. So one, two. And again, just take your time with this. We've got a lot of beading thread to work with. I probably always use way, way, way too much because because I'm not a particularly experienced beader. I guess I've I know I've got a form for not giving enough beading thread, and there's nothing worse than of getting to the end. So I'd rather sort of work with a little bit too much and perhaps waste it and keep it for bracelet lengths or something like that, rather than get to the end and then there's really nothing you can do. So I'm gonna, I've added in the two and a crisscrossed. So then to finish off that section of four, I'm gonna do the same and go through. So your, your beading thread is always sort of swapping, it's swapping sides of whether it goes through two lots or like that one lot, that one space of beads. So at the moment, it's always gonna be two, two lots. So sort of creating that sort of a square in that section. So then we're gonna come out and we're gonna have, go back to the larger size. So it's a smoky quartz on the one side or the six mil on the one side and six mil on the other. And that then leads us into our next design, which is, so again, we're gonna use four, but this time we're gonna have it so that it, rather than it creating a square like that amber square, we're gonna make a diamond. So. Again, I'm going to use four, so one, two, three, four. This time I'm going to crisscross through the first one and crisscross through there. Let's let this fall. So you can see at the moment, I'm really sort of um, taking care to get good tension through all of this because it's just starting out. So it's actually got, it's got no weight to it at all. So just sort of watch that you are pulling it through. Okay, so our next one, I'm gonna go one 
on one side, let that fall, one on the other, and let that fall. And so to finish off that diamond shape, I'm going to go crisscross through that fourth. So you're still working with four, four beads, but it's how you're sort of um, crisscrossing through to make either that, that square or that diamond. So if we see here how this is starting to look. So you can see here, so the smoky quartz is spacing it out and giving it sort of a bit more width. And then that inner detail here, you've got the amber square and then you've got the diamond there. So I'm gonna keep going with that. So again, so keep them to hand. So one smoky quartz, one six mil, one six mil the other side. So remember now we're going into that we want to square. So again, so I've got four, my four mils bring this in. So I'm going to take one, two, and crisscross through those. So you can see the difference from the square and the diamond is that when you're doing the square you crisscross through two and the diamonds to give you that point, the diamond you just go through one. So Make sure that's sitting nicely to finish off that square. So pick up one, two, and go through. So just hold that there and come out the other side. Let's bring that in. Just make sure and you position it so that it's sitting, so they're sitting nicely together. Okay, so we've done our, that, that amber section. So now I'm gonna to go to the six mil. So remember we wanna have those six mil to break up the, either the diamond or the square. So we've just done a square. So our next one, again, let's get our four ready. One, two, three, four. And again, let's crisscross through one single one. And as you can see, so it's really, it, it's good practice just to have your, have like a reasonably tidy workspace as well, because this beading thread, when it's this long, it will just want to pick up, and drag everything that's in its way. So I've got one here. I'm going to pick up one either side. So one on that side one on this side and to finish off that diamond we're going to crisscross through one so one and two and again so let's look at how it's sitting make sure that we've got good tension before we move on to that that next section so you can see i'm just giving it a little bit of a wiggle like that making sure that it's sitting nicely and this is starting to build up really nicely so again so you come to the end of that that sort of either the square or the diamond section. So remember we break it up with the two six mil. So one, two either side, let those fall. Get my four, four mil ready. So just double check that. So I've gone from a square to a diamond. So my next is a square. So I want to crisscross through two. So one, two, bring that in and crisscross through yeah so it's already i don't want to be, it to be famous last words but this beading thread is a lot more easy now it's easier to to handle because it's a bit shorter so again so one and two and bring through just find where the drill hole is and bring that in there give that a wiggle through there And again, let's finish off that, that square there. So remember, come to the end of that section. So you want the two six mil, one on either side, let that fall. One on either side, 
and that one. And again, so if I go refer back to that last section, so I had a square, so now this one needs to be a diamond. So again, take my four, one, two, three, four, four of my four mil. Remember it's diamond, so we're gonna crisscross through that first single four mil. Get that through. And pull through. You see it's not sort of flying about as much there. Okay. And one on either side. One. And two. And crisscross through this one. and bring that in. Okay, so we've reached the end of that section, so the diamond there. So again, so to break that up, I need two of my six, I'm gonna go one, two, okay, and then I'm gonna go take my four here, so let me just double check before I go into it. Yeah, so I've just, that one was a diamond. So I need one, two. So this one is a square. So I'm gonna go one, two, make sure it goes through both of them. And give that a bit of a wiggle so it goes through. And let that sit flat. And to finish off the square, so I've got one, two, let's take the next one, crisscross through here. One, two, and out it pops. There we go. So again, come to the end of that one, so I need my six mil. So one either side, one, two, And again, double check. See what my tension is like. That's it. It's sitting quite nicely. So remember, you need your four of your four mil. So let's bring them in. One, two. So square. So I want a diamond. So I'm going to go through. Remember, you're crisscrossing through a single bead now. So one, two. So now one either side and one either side of this one and then crisscrossing through this single and that's going to give you that diamond shape. So one and two. And there we go. So again, bring in your six, your two lots of your six mil, one either side, one, two. And let's get our four, four mil, one, two, three, four. So this one, just double check. So we've got square, diamond, so this one is a square. So I take my two. Find the drill hole, one, two, and bring that in, let that fall, okay, one, two, so I don't think we're quite there yet, but I might measure it and let's see how, how long we want it. So the thing with obviously a bracelet, if anything, make it a little bit shorter because you can obviously add your extender chain to it. But if it's too big, then it's, you're not really, it's going to fall off when you wear it. So 
I, I'm going to just bring the other one. So if I pop it like that, let's see how, how we're looking. So this one, yeah, we've got a little bit a little bit more to go. I'm probably going to do, um, I might do one more section on there. So let's see how that goes. I just pop that back on. And let's see how, how we're looking there. So your other way is what you could do is depending, you know, if you're going to be, I guess, like a bit of a purist about it, you could look at where, um, if you've got a square here, so we can see we start with a square and I'm ending with a square there. I think that's going to be a little bit short. So I'm actually going to do another diamond and then a square at the end so that it does match up. So I'm going to do one. Also, you can carry on depending on whatever length you want it, want it to be. And two here. So I need my four there. So two four so remember we've got our diamond this is our last diamond so crisscrossing through here that single one tighten up one either side one two one two and then crisscross through this single one and let's find my drill hole and bring that through okay there we go so let's have a look i'm going to have two lots on here so this is my last i think i'm going to have a look at this now and see how we're looking have a look here so if I just get this I'm going to take this board out from underneath let's see how long we're looking here so yeah I'm not sure if these are yeah they are where do we start so it's there isn't it so yeah I think that is probably going to be about enough there so if I just bring that pop that back there Okay, so we've got to that point. So now, if, if you think what we're going, what we want to do is we want to do the reverse of the start. So I'm just going to double check after I'd said about you know if you wanted to have it so it's looking so it's pretty even. I don't think I want it much much larger than that. If you like it so that your bracelet sort of hang a little bit bit lower, then you could carry on and do carry on and do more. But I'm going to stop there. And so if we think about the, the, the findings and everything that we had at the beginning, so we had three spacers, we had a crimp, and then we have the, have the lovely collot. So if I get all of those, and I need my three spacers. So we're doing the reverse this time. So to bring those two together, so I'm gonna go through single spacer okay so just guide that and sit that there so at this point if you do need to do any adjustments in uh, sort of how your beading thread is is sitting if you're feeling like you know it, one part is particularly baggy or you're a little bit it's too tight in certain areas then now's the time to I think that's pretty much all right so if we look at remind ourselves at the beginning so we've got we've we've done that We've got the one that is sort of crisscrossing through, and then we've got one and two. Okay. And then I'm gonna come through. So thinking about it in the reverse now. So I'm gonna come up through that point there. And Let's bring that in. Get that nice and so it's nice and taut. So yeah, you can see, so beading thread wise, I've probably got maybe just about enough to do if I wanted to do another couple of bracelets with this one. So yeah, I'm just gonna give that 
So again, it's a little, little wiggle so that you're not pulling it too tightly, but it's getting just sitting nicely. That's in. So I'm going to hold here and then I'm just going to go in with my chain nose pliers into that section there just to crimp that closed, making sure that the, the threads aren't that they are sort of sat and that, that that crimp tube is pinching both of the threads. So if you can see, they're not crossed over, so they're sitting sort of side by side inside the, the tube, so that when I squeeze that down, it's pinching uh, both sides and both bits of the, the beading thread. And then I can go in, snip that off. You put a bit of glue if you wanted to in there. All of that now is held nicely in that. And I'm going to then turn that in. So you can see how fabulously easy they are to use. They are really, really lovely, really practical, and they give you that really nice detail. So you've made your, you've made your bracelet. So now we want to have a look at how we're going to um, uh, make our own findings to go, to go with it. So if I pop that there and I have a look and I show you what we're going to do. So what we're actually going to make are these two here. So I'd like this hook and eye finding there. And it, what's lovely with this is it means you can add in uh, several jump rings. You can use uh, gemstones that, that marry up and match up. Um, it's a really, really, just, it's a nice, nice feature. And if you, you know, if, if you can also use this with, with your wire work as well, wire work pieces, um, if you want to have everything, you know, make everything yourself. So if I pop that there, and let's see where we're going to start. Okay, so if I just pop it up there. So I'm going to use, let's go with, so I have some 0.8. Okay, so I'm just going to snip a little bit of this off and we'll look at the two parts that we're going to make of this. So you've got the, the hook there and the eye here. And I do want to have it so that I'm, I'm actually going to work with some of the gemstones. So before you start making, um, making the, uh, the finding itself, what you want to do is just check that it's going to go onto the stones that you're working with, whichever you choose to, to have. Okay, so this is going on absolutely fine. There, that 0.8. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, I think we'll start, we'll, we'll, we'll go with the, we'll do the hook first, we'll do this side of it. So I'm going to go into, use my chain nose pliers, I'm going to bend back on myself like this. And then I'm going to go in and just squeeze those. So I'm, what I'm trying to do, you could see there, so when I did, when I, did the, the squeeze of the pliers, what happened is, can you see the wires are actually crossing over? So I want to just have, I'm going to move my fingers up a little bit closer to this section and I'm altering the angle of my pliers there. So rather than it being like that, because it was slipping, I'm just going to angle it down and rest it on this finger and then just give that a squeeze. And then you should have better, you'll have better control. That's also going to just work hard on it a little bit. So I want to probably come, depending on how large you want this to be, I'm probably going to come in about maybe about um, a centimetre and a half, something like that. So going, uh, going along there. I'm going to come out and come out at an angle, a right angle like that. I'm going to again open out and try and marry it up so it's the same sort of size and a right angle there. So I'm just going to go in and pinch a little bit more. Okay. Okay, I'm going to turn the turn the whole piece round. I'm going to go in now the quite a fine point and just sharpen up that angle on both sides. Try and get it so it's nice and even. And then I'm going to use the tip of my um, chain nose pliers and just, just come in ever so slightly and grip there. So you see I'm right at the, at the point. I don't want too much of a, um, a space there because I'm going to actually, I think I'm going to work with the, um, 
I'm going to work with the, the amber, so I don't need it too big a gap. If I was going to work with a large gemstone here, I would work and, sit and give it a bigger space there because it's the gap. This bit now, the next bend I put, determines sort of the gap in between. You can see the, the two stones there. So I'm just going to go in quite dainty there and put another bend in at that point. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm going in here and coming around there. Just make sure that's all neat. So I'm going to add in my one of my ambers on there and an amber on the other side as well. And they're going to sit there. Okay, so I'm going to use now my bail making pliers and I'm just going to flip that over. Again, just while I can, I'm going to give that a bit of another pinch so that it sits. So it's sitting now like that. I want to have a little bit of a, a, just a slight upturn out. So I'm holding here. I can go in and you can see how it's sort of coming out of shape slightly. I can go in and correct that afterwards and just give that a little bit of a kick, kick up. There we are. Which means it will hold it a little bit better. So I'm just going to go and reposition that. So now to finish this, I'm just going to go in probably about, uh, about a centimetre and snip off. I'm going to make two loops there. So I'm sort of giving it a bend out and rolling back towards the amber. I can actually take a little bit more off there, I think. Go back in and bring that in there so I've got the loop there I'm going to do the same on this one so bend out so slight kick out so I'm holding the bead bend round and bending it back so again I'm going to snip off a little bit more as well it's a little bit long snip off that straight edge and that actually makes it look neater as well because you haven't then got that that straight edge all of your loop is round just check that they're sitting nicely okay and just straighten that up a bit. So you've now got the one side. Just go in and straighten those up. So that's going to go there. So what you want now is something for this to, is an eye for this to hook into. So again, I'm going to take my 0.8, cut a section of that. So I'm going to go and I might do actually, let's have a look at this side. So I'll drop sort of one, two, three down. So I'm going to go all the way around, still working, so I need two bits of wire to work with. I'm going to go all the way around. So I've got a loop, a full sort of closed loop like that. Let's just check how this sits size wise. Yeah, that's looking quite nice. So again, we want to have that take into account to add in those angles so that we can pop our four mils in there. So I'm just going to give that a bit of a squidge there to flatten out that section. And that will do, that's going to do, a, so it's slightly it's changed it from, we've got so a, a nice straight edge there and that's hardened it as well. So that is really firm. So I'm just going to come in and Remember, we're going to have that first angle. And again, I can grip this and first angle there. Okay, let's bring that in. Straighten that up. Let's do another check that that sits in. Yeah. Pop my one round on there. And one round on there. So again, remember, I'm going to go about the same and then I can always snip off. So about that centimetre or so. There we are. Bring forward 
and roll back. Bring that in, turn it over. Remember, slight kick out. So I'm holding here, holding onto the amber bead and rolling, rolling it back towards, rolling the wire back towards the amber. And again, just go in and close that. So we've now got that hook and eye. I can just bring that in just a little bit so it's sitting really nicely. So if we have a look at what we've got here. So if you remember me saying, so what I've done is I've actually, um, again, I'm going to bring in the uh, bring in the original one. You can see what I've done is I've added in some other little charms to it. And I've added those into the square part of the, the beaded section. So I've got a wrap loop, a jump ring, and one of the collots. So let's build those sections now. So if I just bring this in, pop that back there. So for this, we're gonna have our head pins And I'm going to have the smoky quartz. So I'll pop that there for the minute. And I'm going to have some jump rings. So let's take out a few more jump rings. Okay. So I'm going to drop that down. So now this is where my, I haven't, don't think I've used them yet. I'm going to use my round nose pliers and do myself a couple of wrap loops. I'm going all the way around to the bead and I know that I can close this off because I'm going to use a jump ring so I'm just going to bring that round and snip off. So you can see how this design starts to build really quickly. Once you've got that, that beaded base you could go in and add as many um, charms or anything else that you want, bit of, maybe a bit of wire writing if you wanted to, uh, wire work motifs. You can really add in anything you want once you've got that, that, that flat beaded work. So I'll just do a couple. So again, so I'm going to take some of these. So this time what we're going to do is I'm not going to use, um, I'm not going to use them as they were intended. I'm just going to close them up and we'll make them into those little star charms. So just giving that a pinch. So I'll do a couple of those. And again, this one there. So again, I'm going to hold that, and a bit like we did when we were making these, sort of like rolling your rolling your wrist back to the start to get that nice neat loop. So I've got one, two, one, two. I'm going to add a couple of these. I won't do all of them, but you get the idea how. So find the. Okay, so I'm going to pick up one of the wrap loops and one of the charms. Just move those out of the way. So remember, these were going into these were going into the squares, weren't they? So if I pick up one of the squares, so now. You can see that lovely pink beading thread showing through. I'm just going to pop that, get that so it's going to sit in there. Give that a little wiggle to close it up. Keep going. So I'm going to take the next one. So we're going to have our smoky quartz and the little star. So remember when I go one, two, so that one's going to go in there. You just keep going along and adding those in. So you keep going, so you'd have another one here, here, and here. And you can see how that's just giving you that, that nice little added extra. What you could do is nothing to stop you. Um, uh, depending on how long it's going to be, but you could put different alternate, um, you know, something else maybe in this section or something else coming up at, at the top there. And if you've got like a large enough drill hole, you could have actually something coming from that 
uh, either of those beads there. So if we look now, so we've made the actual bracelet part um, and we've made the findings, so now it's like putting it all together. So if we look at, look at what we've got here, you can see how that's all gonna go in together. So I do need a few more jump rings here. We've got the lovely, um, this really, really, the, the lovely useful uh, calotte there. So I'm gonna have a jump ring coming up here and that's gonna go into my hook. So let's pop that in. So again, so I'm gonna find the, uh, the opening. I'm gonna go through that lovely large loop there. Now we've got quite a gap here. So what this, what this jump ring would do, is sort of pull those two together. So again, so I'm gonna pop that in, make sure it's gone in. And give that a wiggle there. And bring that down. Okay. And so let's do the other end. So we've done that one side. So this one, so what I've got here is if we look at the, um, so if I move that up a little bit and we look at the sequence of it. So we've got, we've got a jump ring. We've got the finding that the eye part that we've made, sorry if I pop that the right way. I've got another jump ring going into a little bit of extender chain and then we'll have a wrap loop at the end. So, should I open this up? So remember, this is sort of, we're doing the reverse here. So we're going through that, the finding, through these. So you might need to give it a little bit of a wiggle because they're quite wide. It'll sit, it, once, it's, once that jump ring is closed, if it's a good jump ring, it'll sit, it'll be fine. Okay, so that's in there. Next one, so I'm gonna take up my next jump ring. So it's open and close. Take a little bit of extender chain. Make sure it's closed. So it's these final bits of, uh, you know, whenever you're making jewelry, you know, you always wanna make sure that the, it's these jump rings that are gonna hold everything together. So although you might be sort of desperately excited to, to wear the piece that you've just made, it's making sure that they're all closed properly sitting in the right direction. So I don't think I'm gonna need that much of an extender chain, so I'm gonna snip that off. I can use that for something else. And then, so we've got here, at the end of this one, I'm gonna use one more. So I've got another sweet little charm and another wrap loop. So I'm gonna go in, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna do another smoky quartz on there. So this time what I'm gonna do, rather than doing a completely closed wrap loop, I'm gonna wrap, the, finish the loop actually directly onto the extender chain. So just slide that in. Close it up. And do my wrap on there. And we'll just go in, give that a squeeze down. And then the next one, so remember, we're just gonna squash it down, so we're not using it as it's originally intended. It's gonna be that really lovely, puffy little star. Pop that into that link as well. I'm gonna use the, quite the fine part of my chain nose pliers to again, sorry, round nose pliers to roll that, roll that in there. So if I move this one out of the way, can see how this one is going to sit. So if we have a look at where we're at now, so you can see jewellery makers, if I just bring this in and let that fall there, so it's actually it's making a really, I hope you can hear it at home, it's making a really lovely like tinkly noise as well. So you can see how that then sits. So you've made all of your findings there, the, the, the closure findings. You've got those really, really lovely, pretty stars that you've used as they're intended as the, the collots there. 
and then there's the lovely charms here so you can see you know it's a really 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 super useful um useful finding so yeah jewelry makers i hope you found that useful um that's that's the end of my uh advent demo so you've still got a couple left um but yeah i hope you enjoyed that and i hope you have an absolutely amazing christmas and a really really lovely new year so thanks very much bye